sexuality. Well, Jason Ball is a country footballer and activist who is openly gay and he joins us now. Jason, Thorby has repeatedly denied he's gay. Why do you think it is that that hasn't been enough for people? We can't move on from that. I think it's because of society's views around masculinity. You know, it, it's kind of like someone who is super masculine, um, it has to be straight, and if you show any traits that are not masculine, then you assume that you might be gay, and it's just simply not true. So we know that Parkey puts the question to him. We don't know what the answer is, but do you care, as an openly gay man and as an activist, do you care what the answer is? Well, I think that... Uh, gay athletes who are visible are actually quite important. Um, it's really powerful and they have an opportunity to be role models for young people out there in society who are struggling to come to terms with their sexuality and to see an openly gay um, sports star shows that you can be anyone. Have you found that to be your experience, being openly gay within the football community? Look, from my experience, you know, when I was growing up, um, I thought that being gay was the worst possible thing that I could be because of the language that people used. You know, gay was commonly used to mean bad or weak or soft and homophobic slurs were a common part of football. But, you know, my story is a positive one and I think it shows that um, these days people are a lot more accepting um, than we give them credit for and a lot of the language that people use is actually, you know, they're not quite aware of what it is that they're saying or the impact that it has. Jason, you're, you're talking about these days, and certainly I would agree with you, but uh, the Brits do think that we're a little bit behind the times. Um, one newspaper has said to the British Eye, it felt quaintly yesteryear, two or three decades ago perhaps. What do you think? Um, oh, I think that's a bit rich of the British press to be commenting on our, you know, uh, tabloids and obsession with celebrity, um, <laughs> given all the phone hacking scandals and everything like that. But, I mean, if I can speak, you know, as an Australian, um, I'm actually quite proud of a lot of the steps that we have taken, particularly in sport. Recently, the five major sporting codes in Australia signed up to an anti-homophobia policy uh, inclusion framework, and that's actually the first time that that's been done anywhere in the world across sporting codes. So things are changing, and I think we will get there. It still feels a small number, though, of elite athletes who are coming out. I mean, you, you say we're changing, and I hope we are, but it still feels like there must be a lot of people that don't feel like they can come out. That's right. And, I mean, you know, if, from my own experience, being in the closet is not a pleasant experience. Um, and the research shows that people who are in the closet are actually significantly worse off in terms of their own mental health and well-being. And I can imagine for athletes, their performance on the field. So there, there is a lot of good reasons why we should be um, changing this culture. And, Jason, one more important question. Who do you barrack for? Uh, I'm a Pies fan, actually. You're a good man. Oh, God. I knew I liked you. <laughs> yeah, when I, was, um, when I was young, I wanted to break for Jason Ball because there was also a Jason Ball who played for West Coast. Um, but uh, my dad was fine with me being gay, but if I break for any other team than Collingwood, I would have been kicked out of home. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason, we really appreciate your thoughts tonight. You've been great. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Jason Ball there. All right, it's time for a break. We've got lots more coming up right after this. Coming up is a